Hello, and welcome to Conversations with Cheryl Weston. We're happy that you joined us tonight. And we want to bring this to you called the Omaha Housing Authority, the hypocrisy of the Omaha Housing Authority. Many of you have been hearing different stories uh, in the news. You've seen it on TV. You've seen it social media. And hey, most of it's basically true. But tonight we wanted to take a different look at and a different approach. So I created a PowerPoint calling it the hypocrisy of the Omaha Housing Authority through the enablers. So with that said, let's get right into our PowerPoint presentation. There we go. Hey, it's getting better. <laughs> anyway, as I said, the hypocrisy of the Omaha Housing Authority. And Omaha citizens, the elderly, the poor, the low income, the black and the brown and the mentally unstable are living in very inhabitable, unhealthy conditions, filth, pest ridden, bed bugs, mice and rat infected and mold infestation. Treating animals in such an inhumane manner can cause you to be ticketed and sentenced to jail. That's right. I know that many of you have seen the commercials, you've seen and heard in the news where the um, uh, Nebraska Humane Department will go out and find these homeowners or farmers or ranchers, and they will take the animals they will get them clean, put them in a, uh, a livable situation, uh, make sure that they're healthy and normal. And guess what? We don't treat our own citizens that way. Instead, we are continuously, and when I say we, we the public. And as you know, Christians, we're supposed to be helping the poor, taking them out, making sure that they are living and having somewhere to live in and aren't being forced to reside in such horrendous living conditions every day of their life as some of those residents in the Omaha Housing Authority Towers. Something's tragically wrong with this picture. We need to make a change and it can only be done through us. Joni Poor is the chief executive officer of the Omaha Housing Authority. As I said, I want to take a look at this from the angle of enablers because Ms. Poor could not continue to be um, in management and do the things and operate the way she's operating and been doing if there weren't enablers. So what does that mean? Oh, I'm sure most of you know that, but I thought I would put it out um, from the Webster Dictionary because as that saying says, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. So enabler, a person or thing that makes something possible, a person who encourages or enables negative or self-destruction behavior in another. Being an enabler to an addict does more harm than good. Being an enabler to the management of the Omaha Housing Authority does more harm than it does good. So let's take a look. We've got a video. It's very graphic. I'm warning individuals. It's very hard to look at. But in order to see the whole picture, we have to do that. This isn't five years ago. This is current. Omaha is the largest provider of affordable housing. It's the same place the tenants allege is riddled with mold, rats, and bed bugs, especially at Underwood Tower, primarily housing the elderly. Months have gone by, and they tell KATV investigates the problem has only multiplied. So who steps in to handle the complaints? As KATV Newswatch 7's Kaylee Searcy uncovered, the Omaha Housing Authority has the final say. Five years of agony in the place Henry Lee has to call home. 
Crouching over his walker, he enters Underwood Tower faced with his daily reality. They have a, a infestation of bed bugs, roaches, and rats. KETV investigates found mattresses lining the halls saturated with bed bugs. The laundry room spotted with blood stains from the floor to machines packed with dead bugs. They've been fighting him for years. If you go to the washroom to wash his clothes, you come back with bed bugs on you. So you go get rid of a problem, you bring the problem back with you. His son, Hassani Lee, is his living caretaker. He says when he goes to sleep, he wakes up covered in welts. The bed bugs are, are really bad. Not only with him and his situation, you got other tenants that are sitting downstairs all day long because they're afraid to go to their room. Hassani says pair that with mold in the bathroom, poor ventilation, and heat that barely works. Complaints he's taken to Omaha Housing Authority. When you put a work order in, they don't come out and do the work order. He and other residents turn to the city for help, filing complaints with code enforcement, similar to ones here dating back to 2020. Or more recently in December, a city inspector citing severe heating issues at an apartment in Underwood Tower and unsanitary surfaces in the bathroom finding OHA in violation. KETV investigates asked who is responsible for complaints. Superintendent Anna Besboinazzi with the planning department responded saying, quote, OHA has inspectors on staff to inspect their properties. I do not know what standards they enforce. But according to the planning department's website, the city enforces Chapter 48, an ordinance that ensures landlords meet the minimum requirements for heating, sanitation, and other hazards. All city ordinances, all state laws governing landlords also govern us. Those same concerns flooding into the Douglas County Health Department. A spokesperson saying we are aware of the concerns and DCHD is working with local and federal officials to address the concerns of the residents. So we took those same complaints to CEO of Omaha Housing Authority, Joni Poor. What do you have to say to tenants or others on the outside looking in, um, saying that maybe OHA is not rectifying these issues, they're not doing what they're supposed to? What we need to be doing consistently is addressing issues and problems and working side by side with our tenants and doing so in a timely, prompt manner to help them address issues um, in every single way that we can. Um, uh, it is not an excuse that you live in a public housing unit and therefore it should just be this way. That is unacceptable. Poor oversees 28 units that provide affordable housing, including Underwood Tower. So that is public housing, um, voucher housing. She says OHA is considered a political subdivision of Omaha, an independent organization that receives its funding through the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development known as HUD. Public housing authorities have a couple of different sources of funds to help to operate and then to maintain and improve facilities. So we receive operating funds for public housing and then we also receive capital funds. A budget of $86 million in 2023 designates nearly $16 million in maintenance expenses. A closer look shows almost $200,000 going to HVAC systems but less than 3,000 dedicated to pest control. We have procedures for regularly um, going to every single property and providing pest control services, whether there's a complaint or not. Poor says a lot of money has gone to updating community rooms and outdoor spaces at their larger apartment units and replacing the plumbing, doors, and windows, but tenants say the bugs, mold, and rats continue to multiply. There is never a time when a complaint comes in to, to my office that I am not not asking that it's being followed up upon those um, whether it's me following up on it directly or me getting that out to the most appropriate department and making sure that we know what's truly happening and working toward a resolution they have a, 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 a motto going they said that they uh, uh about leadership and uh standing up and power empowering the people but they, they're not empowered they're afraid kaylee thirsty ketv newswatch seven <laughs> Omaha's largest provider of affordable housing is the same place the tenants allege is riddled with. As you can see, and through that, that whole video, it goes through. It tells you 
Yet and still Miss Poor says, oh no, you know, we're doing this and everything I do this. But, you know, I've seen her go and speak before the city council and guess what? She'll say, well, I've talked to you, President uh, Festerson or city councilwoman Johnson and so forth, or I've taken on tours. Well, come on, everybody knows a landlord is not going to take you to their worst property. How could um, bed bugs, mattresses be in the hallway where the television screens, uh, cameras can take those pictures? So I want to continue on with um, my PowerPoint. Uh, I think here we go. Back over here. All righty. Um, and I want to go back to, here's my screen, and talk about, again, the enablers. With mold, rats, and bed bugs. Omaha Housing Authority enablers. Enabler. You all can read, and you know what the definition of. But as that saying goes again, a picture is worth a thousand words. So let's break down who are the Omaha and Housing Authority enablers. Who are those that make it possible for Ms. Poor to continue to management uh, the housing authority towers as they, they are currently being done? Well, we've got several different layers. We've got the city enablers. And let's take a look. Who are those city enablers? Why, that's our city council. President Pete Festerson. President Pete Festerson from District 1. Vice President Amy Melton, District 7. District 2, Juanita Johnson. District 3, Danny Bagley. District 4, Ron Hug, District 5, Don Rowe, and District 6, Brinker Harding. And of course, enablers, Mayor number one, enabler, co-conspirator friend, Gene Stothert, Mayor of Omaha, who recommends the board members and shrinks from any conflict resulting in the mismanagement of the Omaha Housing Authority. Don't let that grin fool you. This is what keeps Miss Poor doing what she does, is enablers. How can that change? Another level of in-house or uh, Omaha Housing Authority enablers is what I call the in-house enablers. Let's take a look and see who they are. This is the board, which meets monthly. And it meetings, everything is done. The resolutions are passed unanimously. Every so often, there's a few questions that are asked and brought up, but not many. Everything's already done, consent agendas, resolutions. And guess what? This is enabling because all they do is praise the work of the CEO. And they continue, and they're just as much responsibility as almost as much as Ms. Poor. And who put them there? The city of Omaha's mayor, Jean Stothert. You have to be recommended by her. Go to the city council and the city council approves. And they do not, or at least they have not been um, not approving anyone that she puts forth. Now, let's take another look at who are the in-house. Well, you've got the Housing Choice Director, Director of Compliance, General Counsel, Director of Residence Initiatives and Public Housing Engagement, Director of Human Resource, and this is Ms. Poor's right hand. She brought her into the fold. All of these help to continue the process. And each and every one of them know what those conditions are. Now, it those are the in-house and the city, but there's another set of group of enablers 
that continue to enable Ms. Poor, the CEO of Omaha Housing Authority. And that's the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. This is the local and regional. Let's take a look and see who that is. Well, we've got the regional administrator, Ulysses, Ulysses Deke Claiborne. He's the regional manager for Region 7, which includes Nebraska. And then you have the field office director, Kitty Amaya. She's for the Omaha field office. And I found that this was on February 8th, 2024, in Omaha, there was an announcement of a $5.8 million awarded to the city leadership um, of the continuing care for homeless and the Omaha mayor, Gene Stothert. What is this funding for? This funding is aimed at re reinforcing the efforts within the Omaha Council Bluffs metro area to offer program services to provide immediate shelter, the needs for long-term housing solutions, hoping to make a significant step towards uh, in the future of collective mission to end homelessness. Well, right now, the Omaha Housing Authority is going through a catch-up on rent evictions because they had a uh, delay on, or they stopped a freeze on all evictions. But now that that has ended and that the... Uh, Senator McKinney was able to get his bill passed and the governor signed it, there's going to be some major changes to the board, uh, the residence board, as well as uh, evictions. And so now they're pushing to get all of these through. Now you have to pay rent. No one's denying that. You can't exist without it. But why are these people paying rent and they're living in shelters where it's bug infested, rat infested, plumbing, poor plumbing, poor everything. When you can have pictures of bed bug mattresses in the hallways. So what's different about the OHA residents and the homeless? Well, the homeless are outside, most of them. Or they don't have walls to their surroundings. They lay underneath bridges, on the streets, on the grass, on the concrete, in their cars. While the OHA residents have walls to contain them in their uninhabitable surroundings. And they have to pay rent in order to live there. The final of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development enabler is Denise E. Gibson. She is the local director of public housing at the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development in Omaha. So I've given you a good set of the enablers, the local, the in-house, and the government. This situation with the Omaha Housing and CEO Joni Poor could not exist without those enablers. But what can you do as a citizen here in Omaha? What can you do? Well, go to the link below and sign on to the Intimate Danger to Public Health Petition. This is being forwarded to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development in Washington, D.C. in order to get change because we see the local is not doing it. The purpose of the petition is the North Omaha Betterment Housing Committee request a full investigation into the Omaha Housing Authority management, the team, a financial audit, removal of Joni Poor, CEO of the Omaha Housing Authority, and that an interim manager be installed until a thorough government investigation is completed. Please go to that link and sign on. And don't forget, if you haven't started and signed up to be a subscriber to Conversations with Cheryl Weston, you will miss out on our next part of the series that we have. Um, we will be talking about the rent 
evictions. We'll also be bringing up um, some of the problems that the volunteers went through to help residents, to help Miss Poor. But nope, didn't want that. Doubled down on not accepting that, running it her way or no way. So tune in so that you can watch the remaining part of the various series that we have on the Omaha Housing Authority. It's important that you sign up, subscribe, so that you don't miss out. Help us to help others. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to being with you in our next series part. Thank you.